Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. New at noon, a former middle school band teacher with Judson ISD now facing more charges. This comes after he was previously charged with possession of child pornography and promotion of child pornography. So that was a year ago. Now we've learned that Mark Mallow arrested again while out on bond. Last month, police charged him with possession of child pornography and online solicitation of a minor. Police accused Mallow of talking to someone online who he thought was a 14-year-old boy. Officers found Mallow and arrested him on July 17th. All right, taking a live look out at the Alamo City. Okay, yesterday we hit 94 at the start of the noon show. So now that we're only at 91, or so you're saying this is a good indication for the rest of the day? You know, I'm going to have to defer to the guy who's got the college degree mm. in meteorology. <laughs> That's fair. Justin, guys, how are we looking? You guys are making a very astute observation here. This is, uh, this is good because uh, temperatures, yes, they are a little bit cooler, so maybe we do a little bit better today. And there's one thing I'm watching that I think you're really going to like. Uh, this is from the satellite and radar image from last night. We had a little area of low pressure there in western parts of Louisiana. And it's moving around the bottom part of that ridge. It's going to move closer to San Antonio today. Now, is this going to produce a lot of rain? No. But could it produce a few isolated showers and storms? Yes, there is a small chance. We can see a pop-up shower today. I think it's going to be generally east of I-35. Rain chances are probably 20% or less, but at least it's there. So far in the satellite picture, we're not seeing much. Uh, we notice a few clouds trying to develop here around Houston. We'll see if that leads to anything. Right now, it's mostly sunny here in San Antonio and at the airport, 90. 92 Kerrville, 91 Hondo, 95 Carrizo Springs, right around the low 90s. So, yes, a little bit cooler than it was yesterday at this time uh, here around the area. Our forecast today does take us up to 102 still, and then we add in that 20% chance of rain anywhere from 5 to 7 o'clock. Again, most of us, most of us will stay dry, but there could be at least a couple of showers on the radar later today. We'll take a closer inspection of that. We'll also look at some August climatology for you as we head into the new month coming up in just a few minutes. Glad we deferred to you. Thank you, Justin. Investigators from the scene of an MLK Day celebration shootout last year now testifying against the man accused of murder. The suspect is O.L. Wallace, who claims he was just one of several gunmen that night at the Santa's Bar MLK party. But prosecutors say Wallace was dropped off at that MLK Day celebration, and several witnesses did see him open fire into the crowd in the direction of an intended target. That person was not hit. However, five other people were, and one of those people died. Meanwhile, Wallace's defense team says this was self-defense and that Wallace only fired his gun after someone shot at him first. New details this noon on what caused this big mess on I-35 North. So this was a scene overnight. This is between Walsham and Randolph. It has since been cleared, but police say it all started when power lines in the area went down for some reason. A driver in an 18-wheeler crashed. Now this caused the southbound lanes to be shut down as well. Traffic had to be diverted. Power was even knocked out for some people in the area for some time. Fire investigators say lithium ion batteries to blame for this fire at a home on San Antonio's north side. It happened just after midnight at a home on Verona Way, not too far from Redland Road. Fire crews say the people in this house woke up, they smelled the smoke, and they found the fire in the garage. No one hurt. This is the second fire SAFD has reported to this week that was caused by lithium ion batteries. And another fire to tell you about. Firefighters say it was an AC unit that could have sparked this house fire. This one just north of downtown. It happened just after 2 a.m. This is the 8800 block of Fresno Street. It's near Blanco Road and I-10. Fire crew was able to knock out the fire quickly. However, flames still left a big hole in the side of the home. Luckily, no injuries reported. Now to Memphis, Tennessee, where police say vigilance and a second set of locked doors at a Jewish school probably prevented another mass shooting. ABC's Rena Roy with how a gunman was stopped and then later taken into custody before lives were lost. Memphis police say a potential mass shooting was averted Monday at the city's only Orthodox Jewish school, saying this man armed with a handgun tried to get inside Margolin Hebrew Academy. We need officers to go to every Jewish facility in the city of Memphis with that broadcast and description in case he 
drives another facility. This surveillance image shows the suspect with his weapon inside the pre-entrance of the school, but he was unable to get past the next set of locked doors. Thankfully, that school had a great safety procedure and process in place and avoided anyone being harmed or injured at that scene. Instead, police say he fired his gun outside, but no one was hurt. When he could not gain entry, he fired shots outside the school. School staff calling 911, the suspect driving off. Police on the hunt for his maroon pickup truck. Four-door version, so the big king cab. More maroon than red, out of state tags. Officers say they spotted his car and pulled him over. They said the suspect got out of the truck allegedly holding that handgun. Officers then opened fire. The suspect taken to the hospital in critical condition. Today is a great example of very alert, vigilant officers trying to protect the city. I personally truly believe that we have avoided a tragedy. A source tells ABC News that preliminary information confirms the shooter had attended the school and suggests the attack was targeted toward an official of the school or congregation and not motivated by hate. Investigators don't believe the suspect was looking to attack other Jewish facilities in the community. Detectives now digging into his writings and psychiatric history. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Well, starting today, everyone, regardless of your sexuality, you're going to have to go through the same screening process when you donate blood. So the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center says they are implementing this new guidance from the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration. And for decades, gay or bisexual men, you were only allowed to donate blood if you hadn't had sex with men for three months. But months ago, the FDA announced they were making a big change to that policy after looking at donor eligibility across the United States. By the way, our new blood donation policy looks a lot like the ones in the UK and in Canada. Student athletes already headed to practice. Oh gosh, high school football season's about to start, but the extreme heat is making it tough. How the schools are working to make sure these kids are safe. And speaking of football, how about them Cowboys? A lot of questions when it comes to running backs, and now one of their big uh, off-season acquisitions, suspended. We're gonna explain. A film festival back in the Alamo City. It features more than 200 movies from all over the world. But there are strikes in Hollywood, so this year's event will be a bit different. We'll explain. Welcome back and happy Tuesday. Films from across the world are going to be screened here in San Antonio at three different local venues for the 29th annual San Antonio Film Festival. It's a big deal. Tiffany Huertas with how the actors and writers strike in Hollywood will not stop this week long show from going on all over our city. They're from around the world. From drama to comedy, about 250 films from across the world will be shown at this year's 29th annual San Antonio Film Festival. The screenings will take place at the Tobin Center for the Performing Arts, the Radius Center, and Santico's Palladium Theater. Rocha says this is the perfect networking opportunity. There will be filmmakers, writers, actors, and so much more. There will be about 175 filmmakers in attendance with their crew of filmmakers and actors. So this is the place to be if you like movies and you want to check out some independent films. Festival director Adam Rocha has been working on this project for about nine months. I'm super excited to meet the uh, editor for the first Star Wars movie and he also did uh, Empire Strikes Back. Ferris Bueller's Day Off. His name's Paul Hirsch. Due to the Hollywood strikes, some people in the film industry will not make it to this year's festival. Oh, they're on strike, so they can't talk about it. That's what, one of the rules. They can't talk about the project. But Rocha still expects a big crowd this year. Our biggest year was 2019, and we were here at the Tobin Center. We had about 4,000 people attend, and that was also six days. Um, this year, I see it even going more than 4,000 people. The film festival continues until Sunday. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. All right, taking a live look out of the Alamo City. I saw you in the boots this morning. Did you make it out and about? Did you hang out with the horses? Uh, I was wearing the cowboy boots, but no, I'm giving the horses a break in this kind of heat. And I would highly recommend that by noontime, you wrap things up with your furry friends. Yeah, Justin already at 92, so look at us go right on schedule. Yeah, we are warming up, but it's not as hot as yesterday. The aquifer taking a big hit today. It's down to 8 tenths of a foot to 627.8. That is a bad, bad number. We need some rain so desperately bad. Uh, molds are low at 180. 
Could we see a couple of showers today? We're watching for that possibility. More on that coming up. It is so hard to imagine, but even in this heat, hundreds of local football players and coaches are on the field practicing. That's why the UIL is implementing rules and recommendations for hot weather conditions. For example, water now has to be on the field and readily available to athletes at all times. And they also are recommending that a minimum of 10 minutes be scheduled for a water break every half hour. We've been preaching hydration all summer and off season, making our guys, you know, carry around a gallon of water and just different things like that. Like you've got to stay hydrated, you've got to eat uh, right after workouts and all that stuff. Trainers and coaching staff are also keeping a close eye for signs of heat illness. By the way, that includes vomiting and fatigue. Yeah, no, this heat is no joke. And I saw the, the KSAP push yesterday, this past July, one of the hottest on record. So Justin, is August going to give us any reprieve from this heat? Uh, not early August, at least. It does not look that way. In fact, temperatures may go up a little bit before it's all said and done. August is, after all, our hottest month. Uh, but hopefully by the end of the month, maybe we can see some relief. We look across the country right now and you can see where our ridge of high pressure is very clearly. The showers and storms working up and over top of that ridge and keeping Texas high and dry. You got to go out to Missouri before you find any significant rain. But I mentioned yesterday there was a little area here in Louisiana that we were watching and that little area, a little disturbance is trying to move around the southern edge of our ridge. So far, no rain associated with it, at least not yet. But uh, this is a look at the moisture in the atmosphere and where you see the darker greens. That represents where we have some slightly higher moisture content in parts of the atmosphere. And sometimes, sometimes that can lead to a few showers. And uh, with this little disturbance, we're seeing just a little bit of added moisture make its way towards San Antonio. Does that mean we'll see rain here? Uh, no, it's not a guarantee. In fact, our odds are rather low at seeing rain. But as we look at the forecast, the computer models do want to spit out a couple of showers here and there as we head into the afternoon. So we'll fast forward to 5, 6 o'clock, mainly east of I-35. There we go, a couple of showers, maybe a couple downpours. Lavernia, Seguin, Floresville, over to Gonzales. Some of these could make their way towards San Antonio uh, by about 7, 8 o'clock. We'll see if they hang around. The models continue to want to develop something, so we'll keep in a 20% chance of rain. Boy, it'd be great if we could get some rain. 101 at 3 o'clock, 102 at 5 p.m., and they have put in a 20% chance of rain, 5, 6, 7 o'clock. Southeasterly winds will be there too, 10 to 15 miles per hour, and then tonight it'll take some time, but we'll drop off into the 80s by 11 and midnight. Uh, we do have 35 days so far this year, 100 or more. We hit 103 yesterday. Uh, we're still on pace to be up there in the top five at least, but potentially the top three. Uh, you see the top three there, 2009, 2022, just last year. In 2011, uh, we'll see where we uh, end up. But today's probably going to be another triple-digit day. 90 right now, dew point is still at 70. So this number is a little bit higher than it was yesterday. It's, that's kind of the trade off, right? So the air temperature is a little bit lower, but the dew point's a little bit higher. So the heat index is still at 95. Satellite picture, again, doesn't show a lot yet. Doesn't show a lot of cloud cover. So at the moment, we're mostly sunny. 94 in New Braunfels, 94 Gonzales, 96 down there in Cantua, and low 90s for the most part here around San Antonio. I think we end up somewhere around 100. Now, if a shower or storm comes in, that could change things. But right now, we're looking at 102 for a high here in town. 103 Pleasanton, 105, one of the hot spots out in Carrizo Springs. It is another CPS Energy yellow day. Uh, don't forget to conserve energy between 3 and 8 p.m. You can do things like avoid using large appliances like washer and dryer and dishwashers. Uh, you can see more or learn more about that uh, via that QR code you see there. Okay, our future cast. Uh, ridge pipe pressure still in control. Actually strengthens a little bit by Friday and Saturday. I think that brings temperatures up even more. Does start to slide west by Saturday, Sunday. Still strong enough, though, where it probably still has a pretty good hold on our forecast. Now, if this can move far enough west, maybe next week, uh, maybe we can bring temperatures down a little bit, but not anytime soon. 102 Wednesday, 103 Thursday, 104 Friday and Saturday, probably our hottest days, and we could be setting some records. We'll be right back.
Camping with KSAT, powered by Davis Law Firm. We are camping with KSAT, and camp is going really great. Well, except if you're a Cowboys fan. We're headed to Oxnard, full practice gear. We got helmets, we got shoulder pads. The first time in the last five practices, they've really got to practice. Nice change of pace. What hasn't changed, take a look. Dak, long throw. He threw it to the defensive back, not the receiver. That's the wrong guy. That is safety Malik Hooker with the pick. And that is at least two for Dak if you're keeping score. Aside from that, pretty good day. The safety, J. Ron Curse, asked about practice, asked after practice how he was feeling and how he feels the wide receivers are doing since he's gone up against them every single day. I wouldn't say, I think they're just more crisp in the things that they do in, uh, in their understanding of this offense, understanding, you know, where, where Dak is looking at and where Dak wants to go with the ball. So uh, that's the main thing. And then also bringing in Cooks uh, doesn't, doesn't, doesn't hurt at all. <laughs> it's speed. Is it speed something to get used to? Oh, yes, it definitely. I don't think you can get used to that speed. Uh, you know, he, 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 he's rolling. He's rolling. He's always rolling. Remember, Brandon Cooks brought in this offseason. Could be wide receiver number two, maybe number three. So the Cowboys have practice the next three days in Oxnard before a walkthrough on Friday. All right, quick update on Cowboys holdout. Zach Martin still holding out, not in camp, pretty much it. Martin holding out because he wants more money. Who doesn't? He wants to be paid like the elite lineman that he is. One stat says he is barely in the top ten of pay for O lineman, but right now, he could be losing a chunk of what he could get paid because he's getting fined $50,000 a day for not showing up. So if you are keeping track at home, $350,000 that he will not be earning for simply not coming to camp. Earlier to yesterday, the Cowboys announced that running back Ronald Jones suspended without pay for the first two games of the upcoming season. Jones, signed by the Cowboys earlier in March, violated the NFL's policy on performance-enhancing substances. He is allowed to participate in all preseason practices and even the preseason games and can return to the Cowboys' active roster in mid-September. All right, from one team to another, look at this. We got the Texans back in Methodist Training Center as their training camp continues. And take a look, a familiar face, former Pro Bowler and Texans cornerback Jonathan Joseph helping out D'Amico Ryans and the defensive coaches during training camp. Joseph played nine seasons for the Texans. Defensive players soaking up all that they can learn from, especially cornerback Derek Stingley Jr. He had a pick six in practice yesterday. Let's listen. I love the way Stingley's been practicing um, this five days of training camp. You know, he's going after it every play and his adjustment. I think just you'll see him in more one-on-one -on -one opportunities. And as you saw today, he made a big time play for us there. Oh yeah, he, he talks to me almost every play. It, it, it means a lot because, you know, he played a long time in the league. So if you're playing a long time, it means doing something right. So anytime you got something to say, I, you know, I'm listening. All right, Texans have 9 a.m. practice and they're off tomorrow. There we go, from the pros to the amateurs. Some of our area teams are already getting ready to hit the field this week, starting their practices for the upcoming high school football season. KSAT 12 Photog, Mark Mendez up early, covering the teams for the upcoming 2023 high school football season. Big game coverage previews begin in just a few days. great experience we get to play in the dome i thought it was an honor whenever we found out the game was going to the alma dome antonian's a great team so it'll be great to play a team of that caliber look at that this weekend on instant replay we are starting up our previews for the ksat pigskin classic four games this year holy cross antonian kicking things off at the dome friday night august 25th all four games live right here on ksat 12 Go to KSAT.com for all the previews of the KSAT Pigskin Classic. I'm excited. Last year was great. This year seems like it's going to be a step above. I was wearing my Pigskin Classic polo shirt that I just got. The I, old one or the new one? The new one. Look at you. This morning. I got okay. lots of compliments. I mean, they're pretty cool. Yeah. All right, new today at 5. End of summer sales heating up. Savings on back-to-school supplies and other big discounts as the calendar turns to August. Today at 5, after Entertainment Tonight. Alright, we're going to check in with our friends at SA Live. Is, is, what, is, that's a nice looking hat. Alright, so if you want to uh, make your what? cowboy hat look authentic, no. SA Live's got some tips for you. Mm -mm. No? You would know better than I, so. I look for 
A family in turmoil, a home turned into a crime scene investigation. That is how the estranged wife of the accused Long Island serial killer is describing the aftermath of his arrest. ABC's Ariel Reshef now on his first court appearance and how the woman closest to him is denying any knowledge of the crimes. Suspected Gilgo Beach serial killer Rex Hewerman is expected in court as his estranged wife Asa Ellera breaks her silence about the wrenching fallout from her husband's arrest. Telling ABC News overnight, my children have been crying themselves to sleep and I've been crying myself to sleep too. Every time my kids go through something, they open a box. Every single time they cry. It's taken all their lives and tossed it upside down. Hewerman, an architect and father, was taken into custody at his office in New York City last month for allegedly killing three sex workers more than a decade ago. At the same time he was put in handcuffs, Ellerup's attorney says authorities showed up at her door on Long Island. She was completely caught off guard. The investigators came in with dozens and dozens of investigators and forensics to do the search of the house at the same time he was being arrested in Manhattan. Ellerup sharing these photos showing the aftermath, saying everything is destroyed. It was traumatic. You know, leave a house in one state and return to have everything from couches cut open to bath bathtubs, you know, sliced apart to walls broken into. For weeks, investigators swarmed the property inside and out, using a backhoe and ground penetrating radar to dig up the backyard for evidence. Authorities say they uncovered a vault containing a massive stash of guns. There were 270 plus firearms inside that safe. Was Asa aware of that? We, we never discussed it. Police say Ellerup is not a suspect and phone records show she was out of town when Hewerman allegedly murdered the victims after arranging to meet up with them using burner phones. Did Asa ever have any suspicions about infidelity, about affairs? We never discussed it and we didn't get into any of that. Hewerman pleading not guilty to murder charges. Ellerup has since filed for divorce from her husband of 25 years. Why did Asa file for divorce? To protect herself and her children, um, obviously with the criminal charges pending, you never know what the outcome is going to be. Will she testify against Rex Hewerman? We have not been asked to or contacted by the DA's office or any investigators to that. Would she entertain the idea of testifying it, against her husband? Yeah, it's, it's way too even, way too early to even discuss whether she has any relevant information or not on the criminal charges. And Ellerup's attorney tells us that she has been contacted by the families of other suspected serial killers to offer her support. Local authorities tell us that they are now combing through those forensics taken from the family home. They are processing those in a lab, and that will take time. Ariel Reshef, ABC News, Long Island, New York. Well, Border Patrol agent in El Paso, Texas, now facing federal charges for bribery and allegedly smuggling a migrant into the United States. According to the court documents, Fernando Castillo allegedly offered in a migrant an immigration benefit in exchange for $5,000. Federal investigators say he offered to drive the alleged victim, who was scheduled to return to Mexico, to a port of entry for repatriation. According to the arrest affidavit, Castillo said he could get them immigration papers that would allow them to remain free in the United States. Authorities say he also changed the migrant's file to give them a legal reason to enter the country. Castillo's arrangement is set for August 17th. Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton trying to get all but one article of impeachment dismissed in court. Uh, the currently suspended top law officer for the state of Texas filing for dismissal of 19 of the 20 articles. The Texas House of Representatives impeached Paxton back on, back on May, in May, for alleged misconduct, including allegations that he had used his office to help a prominent donor. Paxton denies the allegations, but he has been suspended from office while this case is pending. Job openings in the United States at their lowest level in more than two years. All of this from the latest numbers from the Labor Department. Now, it was published this morning. The number of available jobs fell in June to 9.58 million. That's the lowest level of job openings reported by the Bureau of Labor Statistics since April 2021. Economists were expecting 9.61 million openings. That's how many vacancies there were in May. A big change from March of last year when job openings peaked. More than 12 million open jobs. CVS announcing it is laying off 5,000 employees.
The pharmacy says the reductions will primarily affect corporate employees. These changes part of an effort to cut costs and focus on health services like primary care offerings. CBS currently employs about 300,000 people. Well, the airport is getting bigger and there's a new terminal for hopefully more direct flights in and out of San Antonio. But the question is to where? In our latest case that explains, the team breaks down the list of key destinations local leaders are going after and why they believe this $2.5 billion project could benefit the entire city, whether you fly or you don't. The seventh largest city in the country is starting to act its size. All right, the connection between the airport and the economy has something has something been holding San Antonio back. So a lot of questions. They had a lot of great interviews, great explanations. You can watch the latest Case That Explains episode right now. Just head to KSAT.com and of course our YouTube channel. The home of the San Antonio Spurs reportedly getting a new name. A source tells KSAT 12 that the Spurs have now reached a deal with Frost Bank to take over the arena's naming rights. AT&T did not renew its naming rights deal in 2021. The Spurs haven't made an official announcement or commented on this reported deal, but Frost Bank says as well, it does not comment on rumors or speculation. But in its statement yesterday, it did note the bank's history of helping to bring the Spurs to San Antonio. Now, this would mark the third name change for the nearly 21-year-old building on the city's east side. So we want to know what should the Spurs call their arena under the potential naming rights with Frost Bank. You can vote right now by scanning the QR code on your screen. Voting is also open at ksat.com slash poll. And here's some, a trivia question. Mm. The AT&T Center, that's one name. Uh-huh. What other, well, there were two other names that it's had. Well, I thought Frost would be the third. That would be the third. Okay. What's the other name? The, the SWBC Center? Yeah. Did I get it? Is it SBC or SBC? SBC. SBC. Ah. Oh. Close. One letter off, Justin. All right. Very close. Speaking of letters and numbers, that number on the bottom of the screen keeps going up. Uh, I'm it's, shocked. It's going to keep climbing. <laughs> it's going to keep climbing. That's the question an is, well, I, I, the question is, how far above 100 will we get today? Yesterday was 103. I don't think we go quite that hot today. Uh, maybe a little bit cooler because we have some little more humidity in the atmosphere. Maybe, just maybe a shot at a few showers later this afternoon. More on that in a bit. First, I want to show you the full moon last night. Man, it was gorgeous. Uh, you'll see it again tonight. Uh, last night it was about 99.1% uh, uh, full there, according to Oscar Skywatcher. Sends in these uh, great photos of the moon. That was at about 9.48 p.m. last night. Uh, it was very big and bright in the sky and very beautiful even this morning. Uh, speaking of space, let's talk about the space station flyover tonight. Happens at 937, lasts about five minutes. It'll appear from the northwest and disappear to the east southeast. Always cool to see uh, if you want to check it out. That again is tonight at 937. And uh, you know what's interesting about the ISS, it travels about five miles per second, orbits the Earth every 90 minutes. And uh, it's almost one football field in length. Pretty cool. Okay, let's take a look at the forecast for today. I mentioned that chance for rain. We get up around 102. There is a 20% chance, mainly San Antonio and points east, to see a couple of stray showers later this afternoon. We'll be keeping a close eye on the radar. We'll have to dust it off. It's been a little bit, uh, but we'll keep you posted if anything does pop up. Guys. Thank you, Justin. Speculation today that a Washington grand jury could meet later on today and add to former President Donald Trump's legal troubles. That jury set to hear evidence in special counsel Jack Smith's investigation into the efforts to overturn the 2020 election. This as Trump's new co-defendant, Carlos de Oliveira, uh, Oliveria, pardon me, made his first court appearance in the classified documents case. De Oliveira is Mar-a-Lago's property manager and is accused of trying to destroy surveillance footage that might have shown efforts to remove those classified documents to keep them away from the FBI. He entered no plea as he tries to get a local attorney to help him fight against the obstruction of justice charges. And Republicans raising questions about whether Hunter Biden involved his father, the current president of the United States, in Hunter's business dealings. So this comes as a former business partner of Hunter testified on Capitol Hill. Devin Archer testifying the president's son sold the illusion of access to his powerful father. Archer said Hunter Biden took calls from his dad in the presence of clients, often putting him on speakerphone. 
While Democrats say the closed door testimony didn't prove anything, Republicans say it showed that President Biden lied when he said he never talked business with his son. Approximately 20 times over the course of 10 year relationship, um, Hunter may have put his father uh, on the, the phone with any number of different people and they never once spoke about any business dealings as he described it it was all casual conversation niceties the weather daniel goldman democrat defending hunter in that position lawmakers also investigating how hunter biden was trying to resolve gun and tax charges with federal prosecutors remember that deal collapsed last week in court republicans call the arrangement quote unquote unusual says it raises substantial concerns about preferential treatment by the Biden Justice Department. The judge gave both sides until later this month to present more information about a possible deal to the court. The zoo battling a unique problem, people accusing them of having fake bears. Now it's attempting to squash that viral rumor. It is something to see. All right, a new study revealing the best places to retire and the state coming in hot at number one may not be the hot spot people are thinking about. We're also going to evaluate where Texas lands on the list.